some other breaking news this hour. NASA has just made a major announcement about the discovery of not one, but seven new exoplanets, planets that orbit stars that are outside of our solar system. Here's some of that announcement. I'm excited to announce today that Dr. Mikel Gion and his team have used our Spitzer Space Telescope to determine that there are actually seven Earth-sized planets orbiting the nearby TRAPPIST-1 star about 40 light years away. What's more, as you can see in this illustration, is that three of these planets, marked in green, are in the habitable zone where liquid water can pool on the surface. In fact, with the right atmospheric conditions, there could be water on any of these uh, planets. So for the first time, we found as many terrestrial planets around a single star. And that's the first time we have been able to measure, in addition to that, both the masses and the radii of these habitable zone type Earth-sized planets. These planets are among the best uh, in, in, of all the planets we know to follow up to see, for example, with the James Webb Space Telescope that we're going to launch last year, the atmospheres, and also to look at biosignatures, if there are any. The discovery gives us a hint that finding a second Earth is not just a matter of if, but when. Scientists believe, actually, that around every star there could be one planet. Take three, take five, take seven. And you can just imagine how many worlds are out there that have a shot to becoming a habitable ecosystem that we could explore. And what we really have in this story is a major step forward towards answering one of these very questions that are at the heart of so many of our philosophers of what we're thinking about when we're by ourselves. And that basically is, are we alone out there? We're making a step forward with this, a leap forward, in fact, towards answering that question. And I'm really excited uh, for you to hear about it now. Rachel Ward-Maxwell is an astronomer at the Ontario Science Centre, and she joins me now from Toronto. Rachel, finding a second Earth is not a matter of if, but when. Your thoughts on today's announcement? Well, it's certainly very exciting. There have been thousands of extrasolar planets found so far, but to find seven Earth-sized planets in the same system, and all of which could potentially harbor water if the conditions were correct, is, is really remarkable. How were these planets discovered? These planets were discovered using space and ground-based telescopes, primarily with the Spitzer Space Telescope, which is an infrared telescope. And how the method that they used to detect these planets was called the transit method, where they move across the face of the star, TRAPPIST-1, and looked for a little dip in the light output from that star. And that little dip, uh, kind of like a light blinking out in a window, that indicates that the light is dimming because there's something blocking it from us. And so that something that's blocking it is a planet. These are 40 light years away. So what does that mean in terms of one day reaching them, sending some kind of probe, making some sort of contact or landing uh, with, with, for example, like a Mars rover to explore these planets? So we currently don't have the capacity to send any uh, rovers or probes at anywhere close to light speed. Even if we could, it would take 40 years uh, for the probe to get there. Sending signals, radio signals, would take 40 years to get there and another 40 years to get a message back. But there's lots of uh, people working on new ways of, of moving through space, solar sails, um, there's a project called Breakthrough Starshot, which is looking at using solar uh, energy to accelerate probes to close to uh, large fractions of the speed of light and to sort of cut down on travel times. But as for sending anything like a, a Mars rover equivalent, we're certainly not capable of anything like that in the foreseeable. That's kind of disappointing because I'm dying to know what's out there, as I'm sure millions of other people are. But if there is what he called a second Earth out there, does it necessarily mean it is sustaining life as we know it? That's a great question. So we are always looking for life as we know it. So when we're looking at these other worlds, looking at whether they have 
water on them, assuming that water is what's required to mm-hmm. support them, because that's what we've always seen uh, for the life that we know of. And so that's the basis of, of our search for life on other worlds. Um, and certainly if we find a planet that can have water on its surface, the next question is, you know, what is its atmosphere like? What is its surface conditions, its temperature? So it may not be life as we know it, but any type of life would be incredibly exciting. An amazing announcement, Rachel Ward-Maxwell. Thanks for your expertise today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on.